Hey folks, thanks for joining us. Today we're gonna to be looking at some fun stuff in Touch Designer and actually something that a lot of people have trouble with getting started out. And this is how to create drag and drop functionality on containers and other kind of UI gadgets. Now this might feel hard, but don't worry, it's actually gonna be really easy to do. And we're gonna do it with two examples, one where we drag and drop videos from our file system right onto a container and have it auto load and play that video. And the other is gonna look at how we can do that actually internally inside of our networks, because we can actually do a lot of fun stuff with user interfaces inside of our project, where we can drag and drop elements between each other and have custom functionality get triggered. So the first thing we're gonna do here is make a container comp. And what we'll see on the container comp on the drag and drop parameters area is we have when dragging this, we can set a specific kind of functionality to run, or when dropping into this, we can set a specific kind of functionality to run. Now we're going to use the on dropping into today because that's I think what most people will probably want to do. And what you'll see is a couple of settings in this drop down. We've got use parent to drop settings, legacy drop system, and the use drop drag and drop callbacks. Now the legacy drop system some folks might be familiar with, but actually what we're going to use today is the new callbacks which are really cool. So what we're going to do is go ahead and switch this container to say use drag and drop callbacks. And then what we can do is hit this add button next to this drag drop callbacks parameter and it's gonna go ahead and create a kind of base template script for us inside of this container called drag drop. So if I go inside of my container, I'll see this script gets created here, and this is great, so let's go ahead and edit this in our code editor. And we're gonna see a lot of good stuff here. And you can already see between all of the different callbacks that we have here that we have a lot of different ways of dealing with things that are getting dropped onto this. So before I even dive into any of this code, First, let's actually try and see what happens if I do a little bit of drag and drop on this. So I'm gonna go back up a level here and I'm gonna activate the viewer. I'm gonna open up my text port with Alt and T. And let's see what happens if I drag and drop some video files that I have here on my hard drive. I got a couple Beeple clips. And if I just go ahead and click and drag and drop it on the container, I get a nice little message that says, so the component is project one container one. That's what received the, dra the drag and drop event. And then I have this nice dictionary of all the kind of information that I might want, especially here, drag items is gonna be in particularly useful because you can see inside of here, I have a path to that file. Now you can see if I do that with the other files, same result, just different file returned to us. So already that's great. You know, we're already off to a good start. We don't have to work too hard here. I'm gonna open up my code editor. And if you didn't know anything that was going on here, what I always recommend, especially when you have things like this that are getting printed out already, is we can go and find where that print is happening. We can see it's not happening in the on hover start get accept. It's not happening in on hover end. It's happening on drop get results because we can see this debug statement. And a debug statement is similar to a print statement except what you'll see here is it usually has an extra line that tells you where that print statement is getting triggered from, what line, etc. So I already know this is where I'm probably gonna do most of my work here. So what I could do is drop down a couple lines and I'm just gonna print a couple of things myself here. So I'm gonna turn off this debug, I'm gonna comment it out. And if I read through some of this you know, code documentation here, we can see, okay, well, we got two arguments. We got comp and comp is the panel component being dropped on. So that's kind of, you can think about it as, as me. And then we have info, which is a dictionary containing all info about the drop, including, and we can see drag items and callback panel, which are essentially sub items inside of that dictionary. Now drag items here is going to be a list of objects being dragged on the component which is great. So this can tell you that you can actually scale this or work with it relatively simply. Now today we're just gonna work with this simply and we're just gonna always assume that one thing is gonna be dropped. But if you're getting more comfortable with Python and Touch Designer, when you start hearing something like, oh, a list of objects, you know, ding, 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 ding. If you did want this to scale, you could take exactly what we're doing here and just wrap it inside of a for loop that iterates over all of the items in that list. So let's go ahead and actually see what's inside of this drag item. So the first thing I know is I have info and I have this coming in inside of that function. So let me go ahead and just see what info contains. So I can see info is a dictionary. I could tell that by the curly brackets around it. And then I have drag items here, which was mentioned that it's gonna be a list. So let's go ahead and just isolate that drag items. So I can do that with a set of square brackets, 
put a quotation marks and get the name drag items. Now let's do that again. So now you can see I'm just getting a list and each element inside of this list is gonna be one of the things that I drag and drop on there. So I could even highlight all three of these, drag and drop all three on there, and you can see inside of my list, separated by commas, are gonna be each of those three assets. Now, I'm gonna go into my code editor again and say, okay, well, I know for this use case, and just to keep this simple, I'm only ever gonna expect that the user drops one thing. And if they drop more than one thing, I'm just gonna pick the first thing that comes in the list. So what we could simply do, I think for most cases, is just put another set of square brackets and get item index zero, which is gonna be that first item. So I'll go ahead and save that, and we'll do that one more time. Let's drag and drop one of these videos. And look at that, we have easy access to the file path. So what can I do with this file path? Well, if we're making a simple video player, you know, for our first example, what I could do inside here is make a movie file in top, maybe connect that to an out top, and then back inside of my script, I know that this variable here, info drag items item number zero, excuse me, is gonna be my movie file in path. So what I could do is go ahead and just say, I wanna get my operator object for movie file in one. So op movie file in one dot par dot file and dot par dot file is gonna give us access to this file parameter here. And then what I'll say is that's gonna equal info drag items element zero. So now what I can do is connect a null to my output of this container here. And then activate my viewer and start dragging and dropping video files on there. And look at that, drag and drop immediately changes the video and starts playing the new one with just one line of code that we put into that callback. And that's how powerful and easy this drag and drop system is becoming. And I think you can make a lot of cool functionality like this. Now, we said we we're going to do two examples today. You know, one of them was going to be this simple example. You know, if you wanted to make some kind of media player or movie player or VJ deck, you know, this is one way you could approach it. But one of the interesting things about this drag and drop system is that we can actually drag and drop internal components, UI elements, operators, really anything inside of Touch Designer can get dragged and dropped onto containers. So for example, what I could do here is maybe make two different little mini UIs. So first I'll make a container comp. I'm gonna go inside of it and make a bunch of buttons. I'm just gonna copy and paste some default buttons. And then when I go up a level back to the container, I'm gonna set the children align to be grid rows, just so I can have a little you know, mini UI that we can experiment with here. I'm gonna do the same thing with a set of sliders. So I'll make a container comp, and I'm gonna make some slider comps and just copy and paste those. And then similarly on the parent, I'm gonna set the children alignment to grid rows. And now the interesting thing is I can even drag and drop these onto my container. And you can see every time I do that, now instead of giving me a file path, it's giving me a path to that operator. So as I do you know, drag and drop of these two different containers, I'm getting container two and three in there. So now you can start to think of, well, the sky is the limit with what I could do with this. So if I go back inside of my container one, maybe instead of assigning that to a movie file in top, I could use something like a select comp. And this way what I can do is essentially allow drag and drop components to take over this UI element. So what I could do is just go right back into my script and instead of here assigning the file parameter of movie file in one, what I'm gonna do is drop down a line and I wanna get select one and I wanna get its select panel parameter. So I'll do op select one dot par dot select panel equals and I can just copy and paste this info drag items zero. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll comment out the previous movie file in line because we don't need that for the moment. And then the last thing I'm gonna do on the select is just hit match size, I'm gonna turn that on. So that way whatever panel component is dropped on here, whatever UI gadget, widget, any of those kind of things dragged on here, this select will automatically update its resolution in its layout to actually match the size of the thing that's dropped on it. So now if I go back up a level here, 
what we'll see is as I drag and drop these different UI components on my container, it's automatically doing the logic to switch between them. And you can see all of them are fully interactive and it's just that easy. So I hope that's helpful. You know, this drag and drop system is really powerful. And especially with the new drag and drop callbacks that we have now, it's going to be so much more easier for folks to get into this. You know, the older system worked, but it was a little bit dense for new users to get into. Whereas this is super easy. You know, you take your container, switch it to use drag and drop callbacks. You hit add. It's going to give you a great template that you can get started with. And with only maybe one or two lines of code, you can build some really great functionality. Enjoy. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.